Hello everyone, today we have Mr. Fong Keng Yin, or better known as Fongki with us. He is the current president of the Starfinder Astronomical Society, which is a very successful national astronomical society that organizes the Malaysia Olympiad on Astronomy and Astrophysics, also known as MOAA. MOA is the Malaysian National Selection Test for IOAA, which is the International Olympiad on Astronomy and Astrophysics. So back to Fong Ki, uh, he was also the Malaysian team leader for IOAA in the years 2015, 2017, and 2019. And Fong Ki has the life of uh, a very interesting life in astronomy. He obtained his Master of Science in Astronomy from the Swinburne University of Technology in Australia. And he also owns his own observatory in Malaysia. Hello, Fonky, and thank you for joining us here in Amiso. Uh, it's, uh, it's my honor to be invited to for this dialogue with you guys. So thank you so much. So, and uh, everyone. Yeah, uh, thank you for joining us here. It's our honor as well. So uh, can you talk a bit about MOAA and IOAA? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, let me go to the page and see. Okay. Uh, sorry, I will skip a bit. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, first, I'd like to talk about IOA first. So IOA is the International Olympiad on Astronomy and Astrophysics. So it is an international uh, competition for high school students. Uh, students must be must not be attending any university or higher education and must be under the age of 20 uh, at, at the 30th of June of the years where the event is, is held. Okay, So uh, in IOAA, students are to solve theoretical and practical problems. Okay, And uh, the, the competition is for individual, but there's also a team event. Okay, team events is usually they mix students from different country to form a team. Of course, uh, last year is a bit different, so uh, there was an exception. So IOA usually lasts for seven days to 10 days, okay, a week to, to 10 days. Now, uh, each country depends on the year. Sometimes you allow two teams. Uh, one is the main primary team or the main team. The other one is the guest team. Uh, each team consists of five students and two team leaders uh, and yeah and all everything all the cost is covered by the host country all right except of course your you have to pay for your traveling expenses your visa and and other than that accommodations lodging and everything is covered by the host country uh, the questions uh, in ioa are actually set by the international uh, set, set by the host country and of course the all the questions have to be presented to the international board uh, which uh, all the team leaders uh, are supposed to attend uh, to discuss and debate all right uh, and questions are designed around uh, traditional uh, astronomy astronomical topics and also include some latest development in astronomy all right so the concept of uh the, the the competition is test and teach test and teach meaning that um, each of the questions actually bring a value of education uh to the students so they by doing the question themselves they can learn something so uh it is not difficult it is uh, almost similar to the first year of undergraduate in any astronomy and astrophysics uh, uh, curriculum, okay. So that is the uh, IOAA, right? So, uh, so if in a physical IOAA, it's quite interesting. Uh, student, of course, not everything is about the exam, and student get to uh, participate in cultural events, okay, uh, excursions. Uh, usually, they will bring around uh, the cities that are hosting the event to look at their uh, landmarks and things like that. And also, they, 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 they have cultural performances that allow you to interact and understand the host country. All right. Uh, yeah, I talked about the group uh, competitions in the physical event. So, they mix students from, from different countries. The objective is actually 
uh, to build up friendships, okay? Uh, and also uh, the next generation will be more, uh, uh, more, uh, more into uh, international corporations. It's, it's actually uh, built from young, okay? So people learn to cooperate with different cultures, different races uh, internationally. So yeah, that's about all, okay? So uh, this is a sample how we organize uh, MOA. Now MOA have two stages, okay? So the first stage is that we will have uh, nationwide invitations to all the high school in Malaysia. Uh, in this, this regard, uh, whether it's private or public or religion school or international school, we send invitations to all the school and invite students to participate in the first level of competition, which is uh, an online competition. And in 2022, we are going to call it uh, online pre-selection test. Okay. In the pre-selection test, students have about an hour uh, to complete uh, the questions. Okay. Then 30 top students from this stage of competition are selected to attend a camp. And the camp, uh, uh, we will have uh, events like uh, lectures and also tests, okay, uh, throughout the, the camps. That, that is where we select uh, five top students to compete and represent Malaysia to compete internationally. So in the way that we uh, 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 organize uh, MOAA, uh, we have Starfinder uh, as the organizers. Uh, besides Starfinders, we actually need a brand new because Starfinder is not a very uh, big organization. We do not even have our own uh, uh, clubhouse or anything. So what we do is that we find uh, what we usually collaborate with a school or a government organization. In the case of 2019 onwards, we actually collaborate with uh, Planetarium Nagara, okay, as the core organizer. Now, uh, for to set all the questions, we actually form what we call an uh, academic council. The academic council consists of uh, professional and amateur astronomers, okay, uh, and also uh, teachers, lecturers, and former IOAA participants. Okay, so uh, we, they are the, the the function of the academic council is to uh, set up questions, uh, set the 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 level of difficulty in the questions, and also uh, mark the paper uh, in the two stages of competition, both the uh, online select pre-selection test as well as the camp competition, okay? And also uh, in order uh, for a successful MOA, we need logistics, okay? Um, we, have, we have volunteers to help us. I think if you have ever participated in uh, MOA, you know that somebody will actually follow up with you uh, to register to join the camp. All these are actually volunteers. And if you join the physical camps, you, the, all the camp facilitators are actually volunteers. Uh, most of them are members of Starfinder. They are also teachers and students from different schools that help us uh, to organize the event, all right? So yeah, this is. So in, in uh, MOA 2021, it's a virtual camp. As usual, uh, we also have volunteers uh, like, uh, help us to, to control the, the, the videos and various uh, stages of the, of the event to, to make sure everything runs smoothly. So it depends a lot uh, on uh, volunteers. Okay, this is how MOAA is organized, right? Yeah. Uh, anything about MOAA that you'd like to know? I think you deliver a very a fascinating presentation about MOA. So what, what type of questions would there be on MOA? Hmm. What, like okay. what level, what format, and what does it cover? All right, uh, before I go to the questions, uh, yeah. 
that I need to explain something. So I, I think a lot of people are interested to, uh, I mean, involved in different type of Olympiad. You have Olympiad with physics, chemistry. Uh, I think you have what other uh, mathematics and things like that. So these are the, the things that practically you learn all this uh, uh, knowledge in, in your high school. It's part of the syllabus, right? So, but in astronomy, uh, it's a bit weird, okay? Uh, because you don't learn a lot about astronomy in high school. Uh, and also another thing is that astronomy uh, to a lot of people, to a lot of students, is kind of an abstract concept, okay? Uh, uh, how do I say? Uh, okay, right. Let's look at phys Let's compare physics and astronomy. Okay, in physics, what do you do? You um, you 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 have a chance to do experiment in the lab. You have chance to see the result of the experiment. So basically, they learn something in science through the scientific method. You clear up some things and you design an experiment and you observe the result, okay? And most of the thing that you do in the lab is something that you can, you, you can control. But in astronomy, uh, many things that we need to learn cannot be controlled, all right? So an astronomical event happens uh, naturally in around the universe, okay? So we, can only observe, but we cannot control, and most of the ex we cannot actually perform experiment. So, to many questions, it's feeling like uh, astronomy is something that unfamiliar, and and difficult because you can't actually uh, experience with it, and also a bit even some even feel that is unreal. So, all this feeling is actually part of uh, the phenomena is that. You are not familiar because you lack of exposure. If you lack of exposure to something, you become unfamiliar and you think that it's difficult. Now, I want to uh, uh, assure you that, okay, what you learn in high school is actually applicable. If you are a science stream student, it's very applicable to astronomy. And actually you will be uh, uh, good enough uh, probably even excel in it. However, there is one element that is, is missing. The element is actually understand many of the terminology and uh, certain concepts that link with physics and mathematics. So uh, I just randomly opened, this is I think, IOA 2015. So let, let's look at this question. Okay, this is actually the long problems. Uh, this is a theory questions. So, uh, the question says something like a moon is orbiting a planet such that the, plan, the plane of the orbit is perpendicular to the surface of the planet when the observer is standing after some necessary scaling, suppose the orbit satisfy the following equation. So you look at, uh, there's equations there, all right? So the equation is expressed in X and Y, okay? So there's something algebra, you definitely have learned it before. All right, in high school. Okay, here's the first part. The second part, it says that consider Cartesian coordinates. I'm sure that you have learned about Cartesian coordinates, where X is the horizontal plane and Y is the zenith of the observer. So the first problem now occurred. If you have not been uh, uh, exposed to astronomy, you will get stuck about the term zenith. Oh, what is zenith? Okay. No, without that definition, you will not be able to answer these questions, right? Well, scenic is actually uh, the line that that directly on top of you, uh, that pass through the 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 the, uh, the top of the uh, of the sky, okay, above you, okay, it's called scenic. So, uh, yeah. So uh, let R be the radius of the moon. Assume that the period of rotation of the planet is much larger than orbital period. So what is orbital period? Another terms that you, if you are not familiar with astronomy, is, is then you do not know the definitions of orbital period. So, and it says that calculate the semi-major and semi-minor axis. 
of the ellipse. So this is something that you know. You did it before in geometry, and you know what is semi-major uh, axis and semi-minor axis, and you know what is an ellipse. OK, then the question B is another problem. Calculate the senior angle of, of the perigee. OK, what is perigee? So these are the questions, the very typical astronomy questions. OK, you look at something that it is familiar to you, and in different parts, and you can find terminologies that is foreign to you. So um, come back to our selection process just now we discussed. Uh, there are two stages. The first stage of the selection process is the online piece selections test. In this piece selection test, we will go very easy with the students. Uh, we actually explain everything to you. Uh, we try to uh, in the terms that you can understand. That means that which is any astronomical terms, terminologies that we use, we will actually give you the definitions of it. Okay. That is for the pre-selection test. Now, in the actual MOA examination, we have different expectations to the students. Okay. The expectations we have for the student is that you are now uh, one of the 30 students, shortlisted 30 students to, to go into a, a national selections program, which will eventually represent the country. So we expect you have read out uh, more about astronomy uh, in between the pre-selection test and the camp. You are better prepared. And during the camp, we also uh, provide lectures. And of course, uh, with a short period of time, depends on uh, individuals. Some of them may learn a lot during that time. And some of them, some of you may not be. But anyway, it is, it is the ex our expectation during the camp is that you will have a certain knowledge of astronomy to advance into the selection process and to represent the country. So this is two different level of difficulties in terms of the uh, pre-selections test and the camp examination, right? So um, another things that uh, maybe I can give an example here. Uh, Okay, wait, let me open another question. So maybe I look at some observations question, okay? Mm. Okay. So in the standard of MOAA, uh, the camp examinations is actually equivalent uh, almost equivalent to the IOAA examinations. Okay, so the question is the level of difficulty is actually uh, 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 much higher is compared to the pre-selection test. So this is another typical question which is called the planetary questions. Now planetary question is usually, um, uh, they what they do is that they project the night sky into a, or I, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a planetary room, just like, a sky projections there. So they give you the time and the date and time on the projections. And yeah, then they expect you uh, to look at the sky. Okay. So they give you different things. Uh, okay. The projected image of the planetary is a simulated image in Mangalan sky. Mangalan is the place where the 2015 IOA was held. There are three stars missing in the image. Okay, so now if you are not familiar with the night sky, okay, you will not be able to pinpoint which are the three stars that are missing. So for IOA students, uh, besides the knowledge that you have in mathematics and physics and also uh, theory and astronomy, you have to be able to memorize uh, the night sky. Uh, all the visible stars and their position. Visible star is stars that are up to magnitude of six. Magnitude is actually uh, the, the brightness of the star. So the magnitude six, uh, the, the, the larger number, is means the star is dimmer. Okay, so uh, you have to you have to actually able to uh, under to, to remember the constellations and 
and know where the position of the star inside the constellation. So these are the expectations in IOAA, all right? So uh, of course, uh, things can be uh, a bit complicated in terms that you, not only that you have to be able to identify missing star, you also must be able to identify additional stars. So they are, they, this addi additional star could be planets. So uh, by eliminations, you know that, oh, okay, this additional, where the position on the planets, of course, if you know, uh, you understand the celestial sphere and uh, the concept and all those things, then you should be able to uh, pinpoint uh, if they ask for uh, just to point out where are the planets and where are the uh, missing star, you, you'll be able to do well. But it's a bit of hard work to memorize the night sky as the visible night sky. Okay, so visible night sky is actually uh, have many star, but it's still uh, uh, have a constraint that up to magn magnitude six. So yeah, this is the expectations and part of the syllabus of the IOAA. So these are good examples, like what are the questions to be expected, okay? So you basically your high school physics and mathematics combined with uh, additional knowledge in astronomy, you, and you, put, you give you a successful uh, uh, chance of success, okay? Uh, I mean, a better chance of success, uh, probably even a new a matter, depends on how good you are and how hard you work, okay? So uh, these are the typical questions. Thank you, Mr. Feng Qi. So uh, Feng Qi, uh, you have been a team leader for, uh, for Malaysia in IOA for a lot of years. So do you have photos of Malaysians in the IOA? Mm, yes, I do. Let's see. I am underprepared for this. Okay, never mind. Let me see whether I can get anything. Actually, the slide just now you see should have a bit of photo here. Yeah, yeah okay. Now, these are some of the photos of our teams uh, leaving to different countries. So, uh, yes, these are all, if we can recognize, this is uh, KLIA, right? So uh, I, think, I think this is 2015. This is the first time uh, I represent Malaysia as a team leader. And uh, I think on the right-hand side is 2017, uh, which is in, this is in Indonesia, this is in Thailand. And the uh, left bottom is actually uh, to China. Yes, because William is team leader uh, to China. And the right one, uh, yeah, this is to uh, Hungary, all right, uh, in Europe, yes. So these are uh, uh, our team on this, uh, like any Olymp Olympic event. So you have the team parade and all the team is supposed to go on the stage. And this is the, 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 the photo taken there. And yeah, and you should notice that, uh, well, there's this thing here. This is our mascot. We have actually have our mascot. Uh, the mascot is called Murfat. Okay. So yeah. So you also notice that there's no mascot here. Uh, the, because in Beijing, there's no uh, girls as uh, represent Malaysia. So the guys are very shy to carry the mascot with them. So only uh, when there's a girl, there's mascot. Uh, otherwise, uh, Murfat will not be there. It's there, but they it's hidden. <laughs> okay, all right. This is actually where the team leaders. Now, the interesting part is, I think it happened to all Olympiad as well. So, uh, when the competition starts, the team leader and the students are separated, and there will be no communication possible between the, the students and the team leaders. So this, this, this is where the team leaders uh, discuss and debate about the questions, okay? So all the questions actually uh, came out by the, uh, uh, the host country uh, that organized this, that, 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 that year's event. So the team leaders of different countries will look at the questions set by them uh, and to debate whether uh, uh, 
there are many things to debate. Number one is that would it be uh, the questions is appropriate, whether the language written is good enough, uh, and also whether uh, there's any error in the question itself. So you've, we found that, that um, in many years, there are some questions actually, uh, they have problems itself. Some are uh, the solution itself is actually wrong, okay? And uh, we have to work out the solution and compare notes and see if, if it's actually uh, everyone agree with the solution, okay? And also uh, uh, for countries that which is uh, English is not their language, uh, they, they, they actually have an option to translate into their native language, okay? So uh, for Malaysia, uh, our standard of English is pretty good. So usually we don't uh, need to translate. We actually use the original uh, exam, okay? Uh, uh, the original questions rather than translate. Now, uh, the, the, the translation itself uh, for country who need to translate the, the, the questions is quite tough because the time when the debate finish probably is already at night or sometimes the, the, the discussions can last until midnight. And the, the exam is actually the, the following day. So they have to rush and complete the translations uh, and, and all these, uh, uh, all the questions to be sent to the students. The students could be staying about a hundred, more than 100 kilometers away from the team leaders in some, in some uh, years. Uh, for example, in Beijing, the, the students stay in another place, which is 124 kilometers from where the team leaders stay. So the, the papers have to be uh, physically sealed by the team leader, give it to the organizer, and they will deliver to the students. Okay, so all within the uh, stipulated time frame, right? So these are the uh, students, our students. This is uh, Justin, who won the first Honorable Mentions Award. And yeah, this is very, uh, and this two bronze medal. Okay, yes. Uh, yeah, I think Jachin is somewhere here. Okay, <laughs> with a <the> mask. <laughs> yeah, so Jachin is actually, uh, uh, at the closing ceremony, ceremony last year, 2021 IOA, he was awarded a silver medal, but after uh, after some moderations and things that actually he actually won a gold medal. So yeah, after the, the the final result is actually we Malaysia got a gold medal and a bronze medal plus another honorable mentions award. So this is the exam room on the on because in 2021 the competition is online. So we actually use uh, Planetarium Nagara uh, as the venue, and uh, we have local invigilator, which is myself and another committee members uh, from Starfinder. And also some, uh, we get a lot of helps from uh, Planetarium Nagara. And they have, I think more than 10 staff uh, support us and throughout the, 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 the whole competitions, uh, even, to the morning from midnight, uh, from uh, evening until the next morning. Okay, yeah. Right, let's see what, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's all the picture that I come, I have in these slides. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Funky, for the amazing presentation. So yeah, if any of the students out there watching, then probably you guys might be on the next few pages in the future. You guys might represent it in 2022, 2023, and 2024. So uh, yeah, thank you, Funky, for sharing the pictures. And you also just described how Malaysians are performing in IOA. So we move from our first honorable mention to our first bronze. So to our first silver and so to our gold medal, right? So what 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 do you see about the the future of Malaysia in our AA? Uh, maybe we, we we should look at the performance of Malaysia first. Then maybe we decide. Uh, uh, maybe you can decide yourself whether we will do better in future or not. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I actually have the slide here. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I just like. Okay. Now. These are the these are 
our past participations of uh, IOA. So you can see that this, this table is divided into two colors. The blue one, uh, uh, the blue one were not uh, organized by star finders. And to participate in the selection process is actually by invitation. So it's not a nationwide selection, okay? So uh, actually Malaysia started uh, to participate in IOA in the years of 2013, okay? And it's only initiated by Dr. Chong and teacher Chan Wei Hao. They are the pioneers and we are very thankful that they started um, uh, this, this, this program and, uh, and inspire uh, others to learn about astronomy. So we are very thankful to them, okay? So uh, in 20, we didn't participate in 2014, but in 2015, there was my first uh, involvement in IOA. Uh, yeah, we have actually two teams, uh, one main team and a second a guest team. Now, main team is all, everything, all the expenses of course are actually borne by the host country, but not the guest team. In guest team, every students, every team leaders, observers have to pay a uh, thousand US dollar to participate, okay? Now, this is also the first time uh, we have won something. We won uh, honorable mentions, okay, award uh, in IOA 2015. And in 2016, it's actually we only sent two students. So since it's two students, we only have one team leader and teacher Chun Bui Hao uh, was the team leader at that time. So we actually won two honorable, honorable mentions awards uh, uh, in 2016. Now in 2017 was in Phuket, we have one team. So uh, Derek and uh, me are the team leaders and uh, Yongsen was uh, has won uh, honorable mentions. In fact, Yongsen, this is his second honorable mentions in IOAA. So 2018 is the first time we won something colorful. Okay, we got a bronze medal, and we also got an honorable mentions award. Okay, uh, yeah, uh, and also the same same student also win the international team champion, which is combined with other countries. So 2019, we actually won two bronze awards. Uh, Yongsen and, and me are the team leaders. Uh, and then we also won an honorable mentions award. Now, uh, in year 2020, there, there were supposed to have two IOA. One is called IOA Junior, meant for students below the age of 15, okay? So uh, we, the, the, the event was canceled. Okay, so we actually have a, a team of four students uh, with two team leaders, uh, but due to the pandemic, uh, it was canceled. And the IOA 2020 was also canceled. Okay, and it turned into a different form of competitions called GECAA, Global uh, Electronic Competitions on Astronomy and Astrophysics. Now, GEC, GECAA, uh, did not carry the same uh, value as IOA, okay? So uh, the IOA medal, if you, if you happen to get an IOA medal, the IOA medal is actually uh, is accepted as a qualifications. So you can use it to apply uh, university, you can actually apply scholarship. And one of our bronze medalists actually got a scholarship because he uh, he was a medalist in uh, IOA, okay? So IOA 2021 is actually held online and uh, we have William and uh, Yongsing as the team leader. And uh, our host today, Zhe Qin, is actually won a gold medal. Uh, and uh, Yu Cheng won a bronze and uh, we also won, uh, won an honorable mentions award. Uh, this has been our uh, performance so far, all right? Hmm. So I think the question was, what do I think about um, futures of uh, Malaysia in IOAA? Now, uh, yeah, uh, someone, someone said this a few days ago, okay? Uh, he said that 
uh, any endeavor, success must be one of the possible outcome. Well, I'm not going to mention who is this person. He's, uh, he's very successful in, in many things and he's the richest man in the world. And he's somehow uh, the people in astronomy, astronomer doesn't, astronomers in general don't like him much because of something that he put in the sky, okay? But he said that, and I totally agree with him. So we organized MOAA uh, and, and we participate and bring students for IOAA. Now, participation of IOAA is not funded by government. Uh, even team leader, we actually pay for our airfare. Okay, why we do this is actually we think that uh, we are confident that our student will be able to win something. But this is actually not the main objective. The main objective is that we want to the students to be able to, ex, uh, to, to expose in the international competitions and to learn about astronomy. Okay, now winning a medal, uh, meaning many medals or uh, on, and when they go up to the stage to accept the award, it's very emotional. Even for myself, it's very emotional. I'm very happy to see the Jalok Gamilang uh, rise in the international stage. But at the same time, uh, we feel that, okay, throughout all this hard work, uh, we are able to, to let uh, students have any other alternative rather than uh, a choice and options or a list of things that they can choose to study after they have graduated from high school. Okay, so something that uh, we think is important. Okay, so in future, whether we will do well or not, uh, yeah, I think we'll be doing better. And for your information, um, last year, we have uh, 12 uh, academic council members of which two of them uh, are professional astronomers. This year in 2022, we have expanded the academic councils to 18, uh, yeah, 18 members, okay? If I'm not mistaken, 18 members, of which six of them are professional astronomers from Malaysia. They are not in Malaysia, most of them, they actually work in other countries, but they are professional astronomers. They will be uh, setting up questions and also giving lectures and training to the student. Hopefully, uh, students will be able to learn some, uh, um, something from, from, from them. Uh, maybe even win more uh, medals or awards. Okay, but to me, that is actually secondary. I hope, I hope that students is exposed to more in astronomy and they can learn about it and maybe become their career choice in future. That's yeah. very inspiring, Hongki. Especially we're seeing that uh, how Malaysians have been uh, increasing their performance throughout the years and more Malaysians are taking part. Uh, like even the professional astronomers are playing their part in helping advancing Malaysia in IOAA. So uh, I have one more question to you. Uh, it's a very popular question among the parents out there uh, because we all know the students are very interested to join the Astronomy Olympiad. But some parents are worried like, uh, is this actually practical? Like Astronomy Olympiad, does it really help my children in their school studies? Like uh, if, when you do SPM, so, uh, you have so much work to do in SPM and UAC, do you have extra time to do with astronomy? And does it actually have the benefits to it? So this is a popular question by parents. So what was your view on it? Yeah, oh, this is actually a multi, a different view, okay. Uh, okay, let's look, at, let's look at this, okay. Now, this is actually uh, uh, okay, the website uh, extract from NTU in Singapore. Now, first of all, you can see that IOA a medal is, is actually a qualification, okay. So, you are assembled regardless of high school qualification. You fail your SPM, no problem, okay. If you want any medals in IOAA, right? So it's actually a qualification itself. Think about it. Okay, that is uh, uh, one important factors. And of course, 
there are many university uh, are accepting this. Of course, you have to find out which other one. This is just an example. Now, uh, about career choice. If the students, uh, I, have, I, I, I always have this view that if you are not interested in something and you, because you, you, you make it a career choice because uh, you have your parents actually uh, advise you or actually in a way that encourage you, but actually it's not something that you like, uh, but you make it into a career choice. You are not going to be a very happy person, okay? Uh, yeah, uh, I am happy, okay? I have, there are two things that I really liked when, when I was in high school. One is computer science, one is astronomy. So uh, I'm, I actually studied computer science first and I got my master degree uh, when, uh, uh, when I have built up my career, okay? So it become a, a probably I can call it a, a pet subject to study, all right? So uh, not really for career, but uh, you'll be happy. A, a person will be happy if they're able to, to combine uh, their favorite subjects that their interests in, as part of their career, okay? So it's all depend on the students, okay? Uh, you may have children that fascinated by uh, astronomy, fascinated by things that happen in the universe, why not? And for parents, of course, uh, in Malaysia, we do not have the opportunity. We, we are very, in Malaysia, we're still uh, behind many countries in terms of research. So astronomy is one of the research, popular research subject in developed country, not in developing country. So, uh, but uh, astronomer, professional astronomers, are among the highest paid uh, research scientists. Of course, you, you have to go a bit far. You have to earn your uh, doctorate. Uh, you have to uh, yeah, get your PhD first, okay? So many years of study. But when you are successful, you have, and you are able to uh, uh, compete with other astronomers, you'll be a very, very good career. Uh, uh, as compared to yeah, as compared to uh, other fields, okay, especially like engineering. Of course, um, this is all depends on individual performance. It's not a hard and fast rule, but there's something for parents to think about. Okay, so important thing is that you uh, a lot of parents apply pressure to their children to study certain subjects, but Maybe you can think, parents maybe to consider what is your children's interest. Maybe you should encourage them to study things they are really interested rather than uh, study something because of their future prospect in, in, in advance in careers or be successful in things that they may not happy in later part of their life. Okay. Yeah, that's a very inspiring answer. I think now a lot of uh, students and even the parents are very excited to join MOA when MOA opens this year. So, oh yeah, yeah, I think that's yes. Yeah, I actually re received a, a quite a number of uh, uh, inquiries about the when. So uh, MOA the the uh, the pre selection or live pre selection test is going to start in third of March until third of April. Mm. That's great. So I think by that time, uh, we will help share the news uh, about the registration to all the yeah. uh, students. You so, uh, Fung Yeo, how, how is astrophysics relevant to Malaysians? Well, this is actually a hard question. This, I actually think about it uh, quite a lot. Okay. So uh, the thing is that Malaysia is a developing country. Uh, it is understandable that we prioritize our education for industrialization and commerce. This happened to any developing country. We are generating a lot of uh, very talented engineers, accountants. In addition, in addition, we have a lot of skilled workers. Okay, all this with the goal to uh, to make Malaysia an uh, industrial country. But 
look at what happened now. Two decades, uh, two decades ago, we were very, we are actually among the favored uh, investment, uh, investment destination in high tech manufacturing. Okay, but right now we are losing to countries with cheaper labor, and also the rise of China, which is now the uh, global manufacturers. Okay, uh, and the, uh, and also and also the supply chain of really high tech. Uh, devices okay so yeah the we have we actually uh, the problem is that we didn't get as far as to develop a research and development culture in this Malaysia especially on research so many of the talented Malaysia researchers have to work overseas now so just now I mentioned that in the academic council we have uh, professional astronomers and all of them are not working in Malaysia Okay, so astronomy and astrophysics are among uh, the hotly invested research fields, which are worth billions of dollars. If you look at uh, countries uh, in terms of uh, investment in research, uh, in research, in research grant, I think the top is US now, followed by, uh, I mean, uh, money spent, followed by China, just right behind uh, US. So. These two countries are very special. Now, in US, uh, what happened is that they attract talented uh, researchers uh, to work in to to do develop research and development in US. Okay, and China, China is also special. They retain the local talent so that they will not move somewhere and and lost uh, do not have a what call a brain drains. Okay, so they retain their local talents. So these two countries are very, very unique. Now, Malaysia, in terms of money spent, we are, I think, about 26 in the world, okay? But according to GDP, Malaysia is 33, okay? Uh, 33 in the world. Uh, there are a lot of countries who spend uh, uh, much more in R&D and attract, uh, uh, develop a research culture in the country. So uh, that is, very important. Now, uh, Malaysia astronomy or astrophysics is one of the research field that enable uh, Malaysia to build up the research culture. Okay, so I think uh, that is what relevant to Malaysia. Now, sometimes you think about uh, what kind of uh, uh, things that can come up with in astronomy, astrophysics. Uh, yeah, you never know. Okay, so like Galileo and Isaac Newton, they uh, they come up with the theory about uh, celestial mechanics uh, that actually turned into a very important uh, knowledge to build machine today. So uh, another example. Okay, um, now. Uh, radio astronomy is one of the uh, 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 very successful. Australian research project. Okay, so in Australia they have a lot of radio astronomers, uh, and and what happened is that the radio astronomer has always been trying to solve a problem that uh, to actually uh, a faster way to sort out uh, signal received uh, from various uh, various object they are observing. So they want to process and sort out and filter out uh, the data faster. So what they have is they develop uh, a computation method called the fast for real, fast for real computation or fast for real transformation. Okay, so, well, somebody find a different use of it. You guys, everybody actually use Wi-Fi today, right? Your laptop and Wi-Fi, your phone and Wi-Fi. Your Wi-Fi will not work as fast as you have now. It probably will be very slow and uh, and very short range if not for the fast Fourier transformation actually uh, developed by radio from a uh, device from radio astronomy by the Australian radio astronomers. Okay, so things like that happens. Uh, a technology is actually a basic uh, manifestations of knowledge of science. So yeah. So these are the things that we can relevant. Just imagine that 
well one day if we we will find some niche in certain field for example like we have a unique knowledge of technology to do mining in asteroid that what even Malaysia today depend on a lot of natural resources these natural resources will, will one day be depleted and if we have process this technology and this knowledge uh, we will not need to depend on our natural resources anymore okay so these are some things that i think a lot uh, how this is relevant so i'm i'm glad that you actually list that questions <laughs> in in one of the you know one of the things that you asked today yeah thank you so much so thank you for i think that's a very interesting answer because many people especially Malaysians, fail to realize the value of the astrophysics uh the field of astrophysics career or even education because like what you say a lot of the industry and uh, technology we now use also depends on advances back then uh, in astrophysics and astronomy right what you say in wi-fi and even gps nowadays or even many of the materials and uh, things so yeah i thank you uh, for joining us in amiso and I, we are so honored to have you to talk about everything about MOA, IOA, and even astrophysics in general for the Malaysians. So I want to thank you on behalf of all our students and teachers and parents and all the interested public that want to learn more about astronomy and that's so, uh, very warm thank you for coming with us today. Okay, also thank you for having me here. Okay, uh, it's my honor to be uh, talking about MOA and IOA to you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I think you can stop already.